Are you bored of doing 10 minute events that only receive one legendary weapon or armor? And then it turns out to be completely useless for your character? So am I. So I, ESO, have made you this video just for you. The spicy ultimate guide to legendary weapons and armor. I know this video looks like a long one, but you'll only need to watch this one video ever about legendary weapon farming. That said, I will be doing another video on the top 10 legendary item effects next week. Some may surprise you. You can subscribe for that if you're interested, but in this video I'm showing you the best 6 locations to farm legendary weapons in Fallout 76. If you didn't know, Legendary items are your access to the best weapons and armor in the game. Now there are quests that give you specific legendary weapons, like the All Rise weapon, but the legendary effects on these weapons and armors are just not great. Instead, if you farm legendary weapons and armors from enemies, you can have up to 3 legendary effects at once. The effects are also much better, like the 2 shot black powder rifle, or a super sledge that swings 40% faster, or other obscene overpowered combinations that let you solo the Scorched Beast easily. As you can see, all these weapons are overpowered in player versus player, and also player versus the environment. The legendary weapons you get from events and enemies are always going to be random, so that's why you need to farm them to get the best weapon combination for your character. Now there are two farming methods I'm going to be talking about in this video. Firstly, there are actually certain events in the game which will net you at least 3 legendary weapons per event. This is hands down the most efficient way to farm legendary items in the game. Compared to most events which take 20 minutes or so and you only get one legendary item at the end. It nobody got time for that. So I'll be sharing all the best events with you and also telling you how to trigger them so you can repeatedly do them over and over again and get tons of legendary items. Secondly, the other method is farming locations. There are basically locations in the game that spawn a ton of ghouls repeatedly. Basically, the higher the spawn rate at the location, the more chance a legendary enemy will spawn. The reason why Ghouls and Scorched are the best foe to farm for legendary weapons is simply because the game spawns a lot of them at once and they're very easy to kill, even at high levels they have such a low health, so you can easily farm them. Also some of the locations I'm about to show you are also the best places in the game to level up your character very quickly. So let's start by talking about the best events to farm. The first is called Uranium Fever, it's located here on the map north from the White Spring Hotel, at Blackwater Mine. You're going to want to fast travel here as soon as you see the Uranium Fever event pop up on the map. Once you arrive, head over to the highlighted robot and talk to him. The quest will then update telling you to turn on the Uranium Extractors. So head into the mine and run down the train track. You'll have about 5 minutes to turn on the Extractors, but if you don't do it quick enough, you'll fail the event. So let me just quickly show you the location of the place to turn on the extractors, even though it is quite straightforward and the terminal is marked in your map with an objective marker. I'm doing this at level 24 because I have a two shot western revolver, which I'll show you how to get later in the video. But as you can imagine, this is going to be one of the higher level legendary farming locations. I will be showing you an even higher level one later as, as well as one low level one as well, so don't worry there's something in this video for everyone. You will arrive at the terminal though and you can activate the extractors from here. Now hordes and hordes of mole miners will just start spawning, literally tons of them. The game spawns an unlimited horde for 8 minutes straight, just continuous farming experience. So the faster you kill them, the more chance legendary glowing mole miners will appear. Usually you'll get between 3 and 5 legendary weapons in 8 minutes. You're guaranteed for at least a few to spawn. You just need to make sure you hit each legendary mob at least once to ensure that you get the legendary item drop from it. So if you're doing this with a group of friends, you're actually getting one legendary item each per mob. So in total you can get up to 15 or so legendary items per event that you can then trade with each other. Just make sure that you keep the free uranium extractors repaired during the event so you don't fail it. 
Now this location is also, as I said, a great experience farm as you can see. And make sure that after the event's finished, you also loot all of the mole miners and especially their mine suits because it's the best source of black titanium in the whole game. There's a crafting bench right next to the event area so you can, re so you can repair your weapons. Now we have the second location to farm for legendary weapons and armor. It's called the Leader of the Pack and it's easier for low level players. This will appear here on the map northwest from Vault 76. It's always in the same location guys. Basically you need to hunt down three wolf pack leaders. They're all marked on your map as soon as you start the event so it should be really easy to find them. But the best thing is each one of these wolf pack leaders are a legendary enemy. Which means you can get at least three legendary items for killing each one. And then sometimes you get another one for finishing the event completely. But the good thing about this event is, and the reason it's so good for farming, is there's no timer on it. So you don't need to wait for anything to spawn. If you do it quickly, you can get the legendary items in about 5 minutes or so. Free legendary items in 5 minutes is really good. But it's also important to note that since the wolf pack leaders are only level 10, you're only going to be getting legendary items between level 1 and level 25. So this legendary event is much more useful for low level characters. But that said, I'm actually still using the level 20 crouching Charmeleon armor, which turns you invisible while crouching on my level 50 character. Because it's just so brokenly fun in player versus player. And also, I'm still using my two shot western revolver, which does more damage than a rocket launcher. So it's definitely worth farming this event every single time you see it pop up. And another quick tip, if you actually farm the legendary items here because they're like low level equipment, you can actually make a low level kitted PvP character and you actually get more action because most people don't really want to fight you when you're level 60 plus. For event number 3 though we have Horde events. These appear randomly all over the map and if you see one, definitely make sure you fast travel to it. Basically a small group of foes will spawn and one of them will always be legendary. It's so fast and easy, it's ridiculous. Now depending where the horde event is located, for example if it's on the top or the right hand side of the map or even the bottom edge, then you can expect higher legendary weapons than if it spawns near Vault 76. But the creatures that you'll face when you fast travel to these locations will also depend on your character's level as well. So if you're like a level 60 player, and you fast travel to one of these events even if it's located in the top area of the map which usually would only have level 30 to 40 enemies around it. The event may actually be level to your level as well so you can still get some end game legendary items from this event and if not you can always sell it for caps or trade it to your lower level character as well. But literally every time you see this event pop up it's just a very quick legendary weapon so you'd be silly not to do it. For event number 4 though we have One Violent Knight. This event is a bit creepy, it's located in the Sons of Dane compound just here on the map, literally directly right from Vault 76 in the middle area of the map just here. Once you do arrive, you're going to need to make some noise to fill up the bar on the top right of the screen. Once you fill up this bar, you'll summon the final boss of the event. And the easiest way to make noise on your own without getting attacked by playing an instrument is to either use the guitar sword or drum weapon here. Or alternatively, you can turn on the jukebox. And then you just need to defend it while it plays music. Now you have 30 minutes in total to fill up this bar by making noise. It should only take you a couple though. And if you want to long out this event it's actually a good thing because you'll have 30 minutes of continuous ghouls spawning that you can farm for legendary weapons. Now the spawn rate is not actually as high as the method I'm about to show you last but you will be getting high level legendary weapon drops because the foes are quite strong. And then once you've made enough noise to fill up the bar, a legendary glowing wendigo will always spawn, which will of course drop a legendary armor or weapon. I got the hunter's assault on blade which looks really cool but isn't very good. Another good event to keep an eye out for is Grafton Day. Now this event will appear here on the map northeast from Vault 76 in the town of Grafton. 
you're looking specifically for the event Grafton Day, not Protest March. Protest March takes way too long and it's also bugged at the moment, so I've actually never managed to finish this event. So make sure you look for the event Grafton Day. To do this event, just fast travel over and you need to kill the Grafton monster, which will spawn somewhere in the town. It's very easy with my melee build, but depending on your character's level, the Grafton monster will be level 30 or above. So he's also been level 40 for me and level 50 as well, which means this is of course a good farming location for late game legendary weapons. If you have any trouble, just go inside the building and it will just stand there while you shoot it. It's a little bit retarded really. You will of course get a legendary item once you finish the event. Finally though, we have event farm number six, the best event in this list because it's full of high level enemies so we can farm level 50 legendary weapons. This is the late game event location where you're going to want to come. Come here to the south side of the map to Watonga City. Watonga has a high school located on the southeast side of town, just here. It looks like this. It's also placed conveniently right next to the train station, which also has a shop and a stash. So you can easily store or sell all of your legendary weapons that you get. But you will need to come inside the location and then as soon as you come inside the high school, the event will begin. This event is actually a versus event as well. It doesn't really matter how many people are here, but I prefer doing it on my own because I'm a greedy boy. The game will spawn tons and tons of ghouls, some of which will be legendary, so not only can you farm legendary items from them, but you also get a legendary item just for being present for the event. And what's really strange is that the event actually repeats itself over and over again, so you can literally just stay in this location and farm unlimited legendary ghouls for hours. Sometimes, of course, for some reason, the event will end and it won't start again immediately though. Even then, new enemies will spawn and some of them will of course be legendary. But instead of waiting for them to spawn, I suggest that you instead just hop on to another server. All you need to do is exit back to the main menu and then rejoin the game or instead join another friend's game and then once you're logged in, just re-enter the school to trigger the event again. It's literally the fastest way to farm legendary items in the game, not to mention a ton of experience as well. During the event, you can also collect candies. And once you have enough candies, you can actually turn them into the terminal to get some legendary weapons as well. So there we have it, guys. The top six legendary farming locations in Fallout 76. There's literally an event for each level. And the last one is, of course, repeatable. So you can sit there and grind out the best legendary weapons in Fallout 76, specifically for your character. Now, in the next video, I'll be covering the best legendary weapons available in the game. Now, some of you are probably thinking to yourself, oh my god, these weapons are going to be insane in player versus player. And trust me, they definitely are. They're so broken and unbalanced. Many of the weapons I'll be showing you in my next video allow you to one-hit kill every player that you come up against, and it just makes the game stupidly easy. So I think if Bethesda actually want at least some kind of competitive player versus player environment, they're going to need to ban legendary weapons from PvP servers. But I highly, highly doubt that they'll ever do that. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching me, ESO. And if you want more weapon location videos and funny moments and other kind of cool content like that or watching me live stream, check out the other playlist down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you tomorrow.